We are getting into all of the fantasy matchups today. Who to start, who to sit. Do you play Drew Brees or do you go with a streaming option? You want to check it out for this week's start of the playoffs. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Oh! Yeah. Whew, I almost forgot. I was waiting for it. I was expecting it. You delivered. We're good. I almost forgot that it's football time. I apologize. Welcome into the for show. For nothing, because I still did it. Yep, Thursday. Ah. It's a Thursday show. December 5th. I don't know what day it is anymore, guys. No, it's all just blending together at this point. I can tell you one thing. We had just under 2,000 people in the Megala Bowl playoffs, mm -hmm. and those began three weeks ago. We are about to post. We have four left. No, nope, no. Nope. We're about to post the list, and it's down to the final 240 Woo! out of 2,000. So you beautiful people. Two weeks left. And that will go up on jointhefoot.com, that final list. You can look it up and see if your name's there. But if you're listening and you scored more than 108 and a half points, you're in. Oh. So there you go. I don't like giving the number because I want it to be that throwback to high school when you audition and you go or you try out for the team and uh, then you're waiting and the list is posted and you, you're scrolling down with your fingers and then you find your name on the list and you rejoice. Some of us didn't have that experience. Mm. Some of us oh, scrolled that's right. down you the <laughs> list and your, the name wasn't up there. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. You didn't I, make the team? No. No, I didn't make the, the basketball team like sophomore year. Sorry I'll tell you about what. that, man. You can't not make the team – if you don't try out, I, well, I yeah, yeah Mike there you didn't go. Have Mike. that experience, but because he never went to look at the never list. checked any list. No, uh, sadly, my one attempt, and I wasn't a tall man back then. I was a I was a wee lad. I was five two, little, little bitty baby boy. And it took all my courage to go and try out for this team. And oh, and then they and, crushed it. Well, I I was on me really because it was like three days of tryouts, but I missed one of the three days. Because I accidentally showed up to the time for the girls' tryouts. Mm. Mm. I got the times wrong. Mm. They didn't let me try out for that team. Because I know I could have made that team. Well, oh, some ladybugs one action. Of, one of the things about like getting the, the teammates is knowing that they can read what time to show up. I agree. And that's why I didn't make the team. The only reason. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Fantasy forecast today. Starts of the week. Boom, boom, kickers. Some news for you. Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Check it out. You can follow each of us, if you are so inclined, on both Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Andy Holloway. Mike is at FF Hitman. Oof. Hot in and out picks last night. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you went to In-N-Out Burger? You're darn right I did. Uh-huh. And then Jason at Jason FFL doesn't do a whole lot on Instagram because he's but building I'm, towards I'm getting something. getting it ready. You want to make sure you're following mm -hmm. so that you're there and prepared for when it comes Make I don't sure. think we'll ever be prepared. Jason. No, you won't be prepared because you can't prepare for this reveal. Some things are just too big to prepare for is what he's. Yeah. Um, ad free on Stitcher Premium, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Appreciate you listening wherever you're listening. Today, the Blitz newsletter went out with all the latest news, the five biggest stories in fantasy football. You can check that out on the website, the fantasyfootballers.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Marlon Mack returned to a limited practice on Wednesday. Are you touching Marlon Mack this week, though? I would hope that I don't have to, simply because I think the matchup is very poor this week. I mean, you don't know how the You worry about matchups for Marlon Mack? I do coming off of injury. So because he's immediately coming off, I mean, you saw right Jonathan Williams was or I'm sorry, Jordan Wilkins was active. He was there 2 weeks ago uh, and they they didn't use him at all. It was the Jonathan Williams show. I don't think that happens with Mack, but if Mack comes back and they limit him a little bit since he's dealing with the broken hand, 
and then it's a tough matchup to boot. That's where if I could pivot, I would like to have a week of knowing what the workload's going to be and you know not throwing him in. But it is good news for Marlon mm. Mack, bad news for – I mean – that's tough. This that, could be a blessing in disguise for anyone considering playing the Jordan Wilkins, Jonathan Williams. Like, I don't think you should do that. So if you're considering that in your roster, move on. All right, T.Y. Hilton, if you listen to him talk about his calf, he basically says he's doing everything he can to get back out there, but he might just have to shut it down. So you can't count on him at all rest of the season. If he happens to get back and give you a game and then still there's a game left on your schedule, then congratulations, you could probably play him then. But that's not going to happen. The... Darrell Williams, put on injured reserve with the hamstring, explains the Spencer Ware signing. That's Chiefs running back Darrell Williams. No longer an option. And then uh, yesterday we talked about this. Daniel Jones expected to miss the Monday night game. Eli Manning will take over at quarterback for the Giants. I personally think this is a downgrade for the Eagles defense, having Eli Manning start this game instead of Daniel Jones. Uh, both players are obviously – they can – Eli's had enough games where it was very beneficial for the defense, but Daniel Jones had been fumbling at an yes. epic, epic rate. A historic rate. Yeah. Evan Ingram expects to play All week right. 14 against the Eagles. Thanks, Evan. You playing him? Yeah, that's yes. a good question. Yes, I you will. You are. Okay. I will. Hmm. I think you can probably play Evan Ingram. I think the options are very limited. If you look at you know, the last five weeks, who's in the top five at tight end, there's not too many guys that are locked and loaded, so... If he expects to play. Now, the problem is it's Monday night. Yeah, I need you I need, need more confirmation. of a confirmation. I need a, a further confirmation, which should come over the weekend, that Evan Ingram is going to players. There'll, there'll be some type of report. Josh Jacobs says he's been playing through a fractured shoulder since week seven. Oh, my. That seems painful. I got a dynasty question yesterday. Let me ask it to you guys because I had a hard time with it. Dalvin Cook or Josh Jacobs? Right here, right now, in a dynasty league. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. Okay. That's the way I leaned. And does it change at all if it was just a standard league versus a PPR? Doesn't no, matter? No, because the, the Vikings have shown that they will give Dalvin Cook all of the work. And the Raiders, even though they spent the first-round pick on Josh Jacobs, he's still nowhere near the type of work. Could just throwing this it out there, it narrative, could go up, but I'm but. saying, you know, could it be because of a fractured shoulder? Worried about, you know, having to. You, you get a handoff, that's fine. You don't have to, you know, move your arms up to receive the handoff, unless you know it was Brock Osweiler handing the ball out. Correct. And correct. You gotta go yeah. grab it from up there. Yeah, a little <laughs> too tall Jones action. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, it was hard for me because Jacobs is obviously the younger player. Dalvin Cook, look back on this off season. It was projecting him to be an, an upper echelon guy. And Jacobs is still near the top of the league in touches per game at the position, despite the fact he's not involved in the passing game. He's their future, and they love running the football. So it was a dilemma. Yeah. I, it's not like a, a home run that is Dalvin Cook. That's just who I would take. Taylor Gabriel has been ruled out oh, for Anthony Thursday Miller. night. Anthony Miller, who is uh, – Tonight. Yeah, tonight. I still think Anthony Miller is a solid play. I can't imagine him not getting seven to ten targets the way that things have gone, but we'll see. I was asked Robbie Anderson or Anthony Miller this morning. I side the Robbie Anderson side with the target share going up for him and his production, the upside a little higher since Mr. Anthony Miller has to play Dallas. Our number four start sit question of the week has to do with Thursday night. It's Robbie Anderson or Michael Gallup. Where do you side? I have Robbie Anderson just a few spots ahead of Michael Gallup, and I actually I like Robbie a lot this week. I think he's got huge potential. I concur. Yeah, yeah, it's unanimous. All right, a reminder, take your Thursday night players out of the flex position, put them in your position spots, running back, wide receiver. Make sure that you don't get stuck without flexibility. Foot Clan game day alerts. Join the foot.com. That'll be an hour before game time when the inactives list is released. Mike is live one hour before Sunday kickoff on Sunday Live. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. This really is the time of year where, you know, that, that segment title, that mm -hmm. illustrious drop has a more of a double meaning, right? It's a 1% chance of rain, partly cloudy tonight. 
Well, I, I, these games are impacted by weather. Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah, so I mean, it, it hasn't been the case. What's your joke there? I, what's the joke? I was playing into the. I've, I was reading the double meaning. You said it's got a double meaning, and so I, I he led with a, the weather. I it was, him. it was a good joke, Mike. It was not a great joke, but <laughs> it wasn't meant to be like a punchline. I was playing along yeah. with the weather, but it, it made rational so sense. You, but was that supposed to be like local weather? No, that was actually uh, genuinely the weather report for tonight's game in Chicago. Oh, okay. Well, that makes a little more sense. Yeah, there you yeah, go. All right. Well, okay. It's going to be cold weather, like 40 degrees, <laughs> but uh, low we are, winds. Yeah, well, that's good because we covered that game yesterday. <laughs> so Great. But the weather report needs to get updated. Thank you, you for that. Update. Uh, game number one that we're covering today. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know what day it is. Uh, you had it in and out last night. Things aren't. Oh, it was great. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was reading. I I like history, and sure, who doesn't? Yeah, I like reading about history in these times gone by, right? Yes. And I was reading about uh, English culture and like early nineteenth century when they started. You know, they had chefs and they started eating food and they ate it all day long. As in England. E- England, yeah. Okay, is this, yeah. Is this, this down- is like Kings and... Yeah, is this, this Downton Abbey this related? This comes from the Downton Abbey world <laughs> that uh, that I've, I've been in. A but, little unhealthy obsession. Yeah, my wife and I had been watching that show. So I was reading about this. They ate from morning till night. Like, they just ate all day long. Oh, man, that sounds great. And they had people literally just waiting outside their rooms. You know, when you are when you were in the, uh, uh, the rich. The aristocats? Yeah, yeah. The cats. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> and, but the whole point of this... It came to it came down to they would eat so much that they would take like a month out of the year to poop, <laughs> basically <laughs> to go like walk and like they'd travel and then they'd walk and then they'd try to get into better shape so they could go eat for the another eleven months. L i v i n man, <laughs> they are living. That's fascinating. Wow. All right, red skin. I was just saying, you know, the in and out brought it to mind. You might mm. need to. Walk the Himalayas or something. <laughs> I got to do more than that. Redskins, Packers. Redskins at 3-9, and nine, Packers 9-3. and three. Packers 13-point favorites with just a 41.5-point over-under. This game's in Lambeau. Packers have an implied point total of almost 28 points. Redskins just 14 points. This is going to be rough for the Redskins, which means we're looking at the Packers side, and we're saying, yes, they're going to score 28 points. How are they going to do it? You've got dilemmas fantasy wise with Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is always ranked significantly below Aaron Jones, yet over the last handful of weeks, it's 15 fantasy points a game. Aaron Jones has had one good performance in the last four. Otherwise, he's been outside the top 40. Oof. So you haven't been able to lean on him. Can you lean on him in this matchup against a not terrible but below average running defense in Washington yeah I mean I look I'm not going to bench a guy who has the upside that Aaron Jones has because there's only a handful of them in the NBA in the NBA in the NFL Aaron Jones has you know you you talk about okay three of the last four have been poor and that's true but if you look at the season he's had so many outstanding games this is a matchup where I understand the Redskins are going to try to slow the game down and make it a lower scoring affair. So I do, I do think some of that upside is capped, but I I feel like you should not overreact to some of the poor games. Like last week, if he gets in the I mean, he got in the end zone and the the play was called back. But if that changes, then this whole narrative evaporates because of one penalty. The guy is still the same guy, so I am trusting uh Aaron Jones. I do think it's worth mentioning the Jamal Williams side, Mike, you were looking up today the fact that Jamal Williams has been a – Over the last five weeks, Jamal Williams has, is averaging more points per game than Aaron Jones. As you say, I don't think you can make any argument for starting Aaron Jones that you can't make for starting Jamal Williams since he returned from injury. Yeah, I mean, they, they are in a true timeshare, and Jamal Williams has done whatever it has taken – to be a, a quality asset, whether that's a receiving touchdown or rushing touchdown volume, it, it's different every game. But he's he's getting the job done, and I think he's a good flex option, especially in a plus matchup. His interviews are also delightful. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen Jamal Williams, go look up him playing in the rain. Yes, yeah, just do that. Talking about feeling like SpongeBob and 
Olaf. But then it snowed and he started to feel like Olaf. It's, it's, he's a delightful man. He just seems very he's, yeah, happy. He's a happy dude. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, he is our consensus quarterback one on the week at home against Washington with that implied total. This is game two. Stick with the plan. Don't forget. I don't know if anybody <laughs> can stick to the plan. You're we gonna... might be prescribing something that no human can do. If he comes out and puts up a QB1 performance, I've got can you him. cut him the week you, after? You have no choice. Oh, man. You must. I don't think you could do it. <laughs> play, play, cut. We're, we're, we're saying, already I mean, in. We're on play two. Yeah, and he's going to kill. He's going to be great. Devontae Adams last week, uh, very good. Alan Lazard, would you take a flex shot on him? Probably not. No. The, so, you know, th this game to me is pretty clear cut, right? You're once you're past the Green Bay running backs, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams are in. I don't want to touch any of the other wide receivers. It, you know, Outside of Adams. Yes, outside of Adams. And then that's pretty much it for the Packers. And that's pretty much it with one yeah. exception, and it's a pretty big one. I would say if you are in a deeper league or, or you're up against Goliath, I'm fine taking the shot and flexing Alan Lazard. It's like it, this is high variance, not safe at all. But if Aaron Rodgers, if we're projecting Aaron Rodgers to be the quarterback one, more than just Devontae Adams is they're going to do something. You and heard it here first. Jamal Williams with two I, passing. But, but that's what I mean. Like yeah. it's it's not safe at all. But someone else on this Green Bay Packers offense will do something. Yeah, I don't So are you starting Jimmy Graham? I'm if it, it, it don't do that. If you're desperate, I'm not. And you're in the playoffs, and you're not. So the, on the Washington side. Darius Geis was almost my start of the week. Uh, I didn't I just, do it because I totally understand. He's getting 10 carries a game. That's not enough for confidence. But he has looked good. Would you agree with that on his touches? He's looked like a like the Darius Geis you looked, kind of have looked, hoped. He looked good on the ground last week. Yes. I'll say that. Darius Otherwise, Geis he has not. is an excellent running back. I still believe that. But he's not getting enough volume. You had he he looked great against Carolina, which is a plus matchup. That was also coming up. Not on the ground though. It was one. That was the one catch through the air. He was no, no. That was that was, that was three week. weeks ago. Oh, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, last week was gotcha. Carolina. Gotcha. He had the huge run. He had the two rushing touchdowns. But two weeks ago, he also had a plus matchup against Detroit. He had the same ten carries. Had the same two targets. Came away from that game with 38 total yards. Yeah, and, like, and so that's in the range of outcomes. Certainly, that's that's why I didn't make him my start of the week. But if you're talking about a, a flex option, uh, you know he's at home. This is a plus matchup. Green Bay has been very bad against the run. It's in Green just, Bay. Do you like Adrian Peterson? Because uh, Peterson's getting more carries than him. Same bad no, Packers defense. No, I don't. I th I think Peterson is not as explosive today as Darius Geis is. All right. Well, uh, no Terry McLaurin. I'm sorry. No Dwayne Haskins ever. <sighs> and the biggest problem there is drives are going to be very short. And that hurts. You know, you need first downs to run on first and second down. And that's the my biggest concern. Play the Packers defense. The Lions at 3-8-1 and one take on the Vikings. Vikings at home and heavy favorites, 13-point favorites. 43.5 point over under. Very similar to the previous game. A 28-point Implied point total for Minnesota. The Lions just at 15. David Blau, last week, 22 for 38, 280 and 2. Surprised people, no doubt, on Thanksgiving against Chicago. Didn't do much once they adjusted. The Vikings uh, coming off the loss, battling for that division. Mike, you have Kirk Cousins as your start of the week. I do. Thank you for spoiling it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about Cousins to start because he's been very consistent. At the quarterback position, yeah, he's he's been absolutely excellent. Uh, he's been and the problem with Kirk Cousins is that you still have the beginning of the season stuck in your head. Meanwhile, Kirk Cousins is now the quarterback nine, and he's been absolutely excellent since week five. He only has two performances outside of the top ten, and Detroit is a team that I want to take on. So I'm very confident, very comfortable playing Cousins. I am curious about this game because when they played last time, it was a great matchup for both Stafford and Cousins. The Lions could keep up with Minnesota, putting them in the position. Even last week, Cousins' game was saved on coming back from two and a half scores down and you know doing it at the end of that game. 
That's my only concern with this one. Now, we don't know whether Dalvin Cook's going to be 100% or even in this game. I do think you can you can flex Alexander Madison regardless. I think we can confidently say Dalvin Cook will not be 100%. It, sure. It, it, it's just what is that percentage actually at? I'm with Andy. I'm, I think Madison is an okay flex play. That There's so many different variables that could happen. Like Dalvin Cook, number one, best option. He does for Madison. Dalvin Cook doesn't even play. Number two, uh, they just share the time 50-50. And then the third option, which is also very, very possible, the Vikings get way up on Detroit. They say, Dalvin Cook, you're hurt. Go rest. Alexander Madison, get in there and clean up. Yeah, either way. I, I agree with everything being said. But if Dalvin Cook is active, don't worry. You, you, you start him. This is the highest... This is the highest point spread in the, on the week. He's at home. This is as plus a matchup as you get. So, for instance, your example of the Vikings get up and they pull him, sure, maybe that you don't get that crazy 38 fantasy points. But the reason they're up enough to pull him is probably Dalvin Cook. And if you listen maybe. to Mike Zimmer talk about this, you know, Dalvin Cook's 100% sure he's going to play. Mike Zimmer basically said, well, we'll see. We're not playing a hurt player. That's what he said. So they may have the luxury of not playing Dalvin Cook in this game. I, you know, you don't take chances with any matchup, really, but they may have that luxury, and oh, it could be a team decision. The Foot Clan would be so happy. To let Alexander <laughs> Madison run wild. Well, they will be a little unhappy because Dalvin Cook is not playing. Like, yeah, but every like, Foot Clan listener who has Dalvin Cook has Alexander Madison. And they probably want the clarity. Yeah, I, I would, mean, if you're in that situation and it's Detroit, I'd rather have Madison alone uh, than have to flex Madison with Cook. Yeah, that's I exactly how but I am. If you have Dalvin Cook, if you've got Dalvin and somehow you don't have Madison, you need to be preparing for Sunday just in case. There is it's not a, it's not locked in that Dalvin's going to play. Yeah, we we've been here with David Johnson and Chase Edmonds. We yeah. had a game where people said, "Okay, well, I have to start DJ over Chase Edmonds when Edmonds went off for three touchdowns against right. the Giants." So there's some risk. Adam Thielen, oh, he wouldn't have practiced on Wednesday if they had practiced. I don't see how you possibly play Adam Thielen until he proves it for an entire game, and he's missed seven weeks with the same hamstring. And now they're saying he wouldn't have practiced. So I don't think he plays. And if he does play, I'm not putting him in my lineup until I see a week. He's not that trustworthy. Do you agree with that? Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah I, I tend to agree with that. On the other side of the ball with the Lions wide receivers, the matchup is juicy against the Vikings. They're 28th against fantasy wide receivers. David Blau, he can at least do something. So are are you playing both Galladay and Marvin Jones, or is it just Galladay but, or both in Marvin Jones is a flex play? I'd play them both. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the one thing that you've seen, even though you've had multiple backups now in Detroit, is that they are willing to throw the ball and air it out. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's basically a situation where they – you talk about game script. If they're down – Garbage time could be all you need for Galladay and Marvin Jones to get you enough production. It's just really hard to sit them. A lot of people sat Kenny Galladay last week, lost their matchups because of it. Even though on paper it seemed like a bad decision to start him, he's a really talented player. He can beat any defensive coverage and certainly Xavier Rhodes and company. So Man, he's uh, been now, bad. Bo Scarborough. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to let us move on without talking about him. His first start, 55 and a touchdown, 98 rushing yards, 83 rushing yards. The dude's getting it done. And I like him more than Geiser Peterson this week. I I tend to agree with that, yeah. No. Yeah. You would make me Geis V. If you give Bo. me 20 Bo Scarborough carries versus 10 Darius Geis carries this week, I'll take Bo Bo's. And that's what I would project. Okay, well, let's let's do a Betsky there. Of, oh, fine. Uh, just Geis yeah, V, go. Bo Scarborough. You too? Yeah, I'm in. Great. <laughs> Water bed. By the way, that was U T O O. You also? Yes. Yeah, we're me and you versus Jason. Yes. That's fine. Kyle Rudolph touchdown in four straight games. The last other player I wanted to mention. If Thielen's out, Rudolph is in. Yeah, that's the way. You yeah, do it's it. a good way to look at it. Um, and and you know, look, the Vikings. I know they just got torched on the ground uh, by the Seahawks. Both running backs being great. Outside of that, it's been a long time since they've given up a a good ground game. I I, I just don't think that Bo Scarborough is going to be the one you know he's just he's no Chris Carson no he's he's not great but he will get the volume yeah 
All right. Well, before we get into our next matchup, I want to the think next matchup. The next. <laughs> the next matchup. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's that works. No, of course it does. What's wrong? See, with what that? I was trying to do, Jason, was give you a moment to clear your throat. I did before you did the read. So I was trying to interject <laughs> for a split second to buy you a second to clear your throat, so no one had to suffer. Mm. But now you've called me out on it, like well, I was you insulting you. The curtain back. Yeah. And shown us. But we do want to thank Warby Parker. <laughs> who I have personally used before. Warby Parker was founded with the goal to create boutique-quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Their glasses start at 95 bucks, including prescription lenses. Lenses include anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. And look, if you need help, you could take a quiz at warbyparker.com slash footballers. You answer a few quick questions and they will suggest some great-looking glasses, and you get to try them on at home for free, figure out which ones look the best. They send you five pairs of glasses to try them on for five days, no obligation to buy. And now they have Scout by Warby Parker, comfortable, breathable, and affordable daily contact lenses. You can get that. Please take the quiz and order a home try-on kit and share your experience if it, look, here's the deal. My experience with Warby Parker was great. You get them at home. You try them on. I thought the one I was going to love the most, I didn't like at all. And then my wife loved the other pair, and it was like, oh, that's really nice. Now I know how to buy glasses online. You can order the free home try-on program uh, you know, or request the trial of Scout contact lenses for just five bucks. Visit warbyparker.com slash footballers to learn more. That's warbyparker.com slash footballers. All right. The Panthers at five and seven take on the Falcons at three and nine. Falcons, three point home favorites, 47 point over under. Panthers now without Ron Rivera. Uh, playoff hopes in the rear view mirror. Kyle Allen. Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore and company heading to Atlanta. You guys both like some of these pieces on the Atlanta side this week. They are favored. Let's start with the quarterback position. It's not been good for Matt Ryan. The no. last four weeks, it's it's been really ugly. 15, 15, 23, 13. And maybe you say, okay, well, that's not that ugly. Well, yeah, it is it's for pretty, Matt Ryan when you have ugly. you've got matchups that you thought he would exploit against Carolina and Tampa Bay, where he ends up outside the top 15 at the position. If you've watched him, I mean, he just doesn't look good. He reminds me of Carson Palmer in the pocket. You know, it's just no ability to do anything outside. No Julio Jones on the field recently. Well, I, I, the reason that I, that I give for the struggles of Matt Ryan looking back at these games Obviously, the whole season has been a problem with the offensive line. That's an issue that is not fixable right now midseason. But then, look at this last month. What have you been missing? Well, Mohamed Sanu is gone. Austin Hooper has been gone. Julio Jones, I mean, you can't just lose all of your passing options and then still be a great quarterback. Right now... Just ask Carson Wentz how that worked ex out. Exactly. Right now, it's, it's a little too early, but the expectation... You know, Calvin Ridley, Austin Hooper, Julio Jones all practiced in limited fashion uh, yesterday, so we'll we'll wait. But it looks like he might have his full set of weapons this week in a, a pretty good matchup against Carolina. Divisional game, which is always a little dicey. Yeah, and then we have the extra layer. Yeah, you have the, the division diceness, and then you have the coach change for the Carolina Panthers where – it's really hard to know which way that things are going to go for the team. We've seen like we we've seen teams rally once the head coach is gone and they come out and they're able to put up a one week performance above all expectations. And then we've also seen teams just come out and collapse like a paper house. And I'm I honestly don't know which way to go with with the Carolina Panthers on when it, when it comes to looking at what's going on with the coaching, but. I'm still going to be playing like Devonta Freeman with complete and full confidence against this Panthers defense. Andy's almost upset of the week. Interesting. Yeah, Falcons three-point favorites. I think Carolina comes in and competes with them pretty well this week. We'll see if 
you know, Julio is limited, whether Hooper gets out there. Uh, you know, at this point, Kyle Allen's coming off of back-to-back QB8 finishes. The Falcons' defense is not very intimidating. I don't think anybody... I don't think anybody wants to or has thought about playing Kyle Allen. And you probably, you know, if you're here, <laughs> if you're here at this point, you probably don't need to think about it. But I won't be surprised if Kyle Allen has a pretty good game against an Atlanta defense that is 30th against fantasy quarterbacks and 25th against fantasy wide receivers. I was going to say, look, the you might be here in a two-quarterback league in a situation where you've got three quarterbacks and you're thinking, who – are the options to play and if you're talking about throwing Ryan Fitzpatrick in there as a streamer I, I think Kyle Allen should be in the conversation it looked like Atlanta had fixed their defense right they come out of the bye and against the Saints in that divisional matchup and against Carolina uh, remember Carolina uh, did not fare well last time around right. with with the Falcons but then just look at the last two weeks the they give up the number one quarterback performance last week the number four quarterback performance the week before so yeah, I, I think uh, I think he is an option in to in a super flex league. Over the last three games, Ryan Fitzpatrick is the quarterback three. Kyle Allen is the quarterback seven. Mm. Over the last three games, Christian McCaffrey, you play him. Devonta yep. Freeman, I think you play him this week. Yep. Yeah, we're going to talk about him later too. DJ Carolina. Moore. DJ Moore is the wide receiver seven on the season. It's fantastic. No, that's your that's your ranking there. <laughs> Maybe he's on the season two. He's the wide receiver nine over the last eight games. <laughs> there we go. DJ Moore, the breakout he's of He's the wide receiver two over the last five games. Do we got another one? I'm just trying to find one where he's number seven. Uh, <laughs> you keep looking. DJ Moore, the breakout for DJ Moore has been so sensational. Uh, he's, he's an auto start every week. He is an absolute target hog. He's the guy that Kyle Allen goes to. He's... He's emerging. He's becoming the wide receiver that he was drafted to be. He was the uh, – was last year? Was he drafted last year in the yes, first round? Yes, last was, year he was – He was the first wide receiver taken off the board, and he's paying off for the Panthers right now, and, and he, he's paying off for fantasy. He is the wide receiver seven on the season if you sub, if you just take away three guys ahead of him. <laughs> yes. So, so I, I think you're it. right, Andy. You know, <laughs> I knew it. You don't want to include Galladay and Chark right. and Edelman above him. No, so no. DJ Moore is, for all intents and purposes, the, the wide receiver seven. We've said it before. We'll say it again, at least Jason and myself. If Austin Hooper is active, I am playing Austin Hooper. The options at tight end are very limited, and this is the number one tight end on the season coming back if he comes back. What about Curtis Samuel, who, if you've been playing him the last – Two weeks, you were suffering. He was destroying your team. And then perhaps, as if you're like my team, I finally benched him last week. And that's when he comes out four for 65 with the touchdown. I think the matchup is good. He's the same category of of risk as Anthony Miller. Okay. The same category of risk as maybe a Gallup or Robbie Anderson. I think Curtis Samuel, in this specific matchup, has every chance to give you a flex-worthy performance. Do you guys disagree? No, I, I, I do agree. This you know, this is one of those games where in division, maybe it's wacky, maybe it's low scoring, but it you know, it projects to be a pretty healthy game of two decently poor poor defenses and two offenses that can get the job done. I if if Matt Ryan doesn't have a couple weapons back, I'd be running for the hills. Sure. I Carolina's can... defense is number one in the league in sacks. They put so much pressure on the quarterback and Matt Ryan is not mobile it makes if such, he has no weapons such difference he has to have at least julio which i i think we all expect julio to be there this i think week. we do yeah, we I do. think we do but if he has julio plus uh austin hooper then he goes from being a, a poor option to a very good option this week i didn't mention it at the top um brooks are we getting into the eagles game today do you know Oh, one sec. Let's... Yeah, uh, Jordan Howard is not been cleared for contact. I want to make sure I get that gets mentioned. Oh, that's a Monday. That's tomorrow, Monday night game. Okay, so we'll talk about that one tomorrow, and we'll see how he's doing. But he's not going to play. No. If you're not cleared for contact, you're not practicing yet. Whatever he's got going on is limiting him. They had to sign a Jay Ajayi. Most teams flirt with Jay Ajayi, and you never sign a Jay Ajayi. You bring right. Ajayi in as a motivation for who's yeah. already on your roster. You say, hey, we're trying guys out. You might step it up. So, they signed him. Yeah. Do you think Jordan Howard's back with Philadelphia next year? No. I do not. I do not. But so, he should be back somewhere. I mean, he, well, he, that, this was, that was more like a Miles Sanders projecting him for next year. 
Yeah, I don't know what to think about Miles Sanders. I don't know whether the team – I don't think it's been – it's not been gangbusters for him since he's had the role to himself. And we've kind of seen that with multiple rookies this year, like Singletary, Montgomery, and Miles Sanders have all had opportunities, but none of them have really – uh, like Singletary's looked good, but production-wise for fantasy has not been consistent. Right. Montgomery has looked bad and not produced, but here and there hits. And Sanders has had good weeks and bad weeks. So, all right, this is an exciting game. The 49ers at ten and two take on the Saints at ten and two. Saints are two and a half point home favorites. It's a forty-four and a half point over under. This is really difficult, I think, for fantasy football players in the playoffs with Saints players. Because the 49ers defense is just, it's stout. It's solid. Very few teams have done anything against them, and very few quarterbacks have done anything against them. Here you are with Drew Brees. Do you play all these streaming options, the Fitzpatrick, Tannehill, Darnold options over Drew Brees in playoffs week one? Oh, man, that is that is really, really tough to do, and I think I would do it. Most of really? most of the options out there, I would expect to have a better game than Drew Brees. Uh, you know, you you've you've got the ability here with the Saints, to, and that's not to say Drew Brees can't get it done. He certainly, obviously, is a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback, um, and he could get it done just by constantly targeting Michael Thomas over and over and over and over and over. Um, but they can also try to run the ball here and you know beat them a number of different ways we have so many games for Drew Brees over the last two years three years really where he's not always a great fantasy player and so well, look you're at the caught two. up with the name of Drew Brees but he he's not one of those week in and week out guys that are always good for fantasy let me just illustrate that point for you Jason Atlanta he's played Atlanta twice we just talked about the matchup that Atlanta is for opposing quarterbacks he's played Atlanta two times in the last four games He's the fantasy quarterback 21 and the fantasy quarterback 27. That's Drew Brees' games. It, you know, so like you said, there, it's not the guarantee. And at home against the 49ers, I'm trying to move away. I, I'm not forcing a move away from Drew Brees at home. He's. He, I don't think he's a top 15 guy this week. I. I. So you're willing. You're. You're willing to good make that pivot of you're going to stream Sam Darnold. You're going to stream Tannehill and Fitzpatrick over Drew Brees. I think I would do all three. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I know that's a bold statement, but I don't. San Francisco coming off a loss. I I don't love it. Yeah, I I don't love it either. But I if I think if I have Drew Brees, I'm going to stick with him at home this year. We, we got our smaller sample size, but we historically Drew Brees is much better at home. It's true. And this year, that that weird game against Atlanta, that's his his one down game at home. Other than that, he's been he's been averaging about two and a half touchdowns a game. We've talked a lot about Josh Allen and the matchups for Josh Allen, who's been a more consistent fantasy producer. He's at home too against Baltimore, so I think it's just what are you what do you want to go down with? Yeah, um, it, that's the Drew Brees question is a very tough one this week. Al, that, that being said, Michael Thomas, not a tough question. Never, no. never is. No, no. Alvin Kamara, not a tough question either. No, it's not fun to play against the 49ers. Um, I believe Kamara led the NFL last week in uh, chunk plays, so he can still get it done. He's had at least eight targets in his last five games. No, he's not. He's been – would you call Alvin Kamara a bust? No. He feels I like think, it. I think I would call him a bust. He, it, it's Between not injury fair. and production. Yeah, it's not fair because it was, I think, so much determined because of the injury. Um, but as of now, if you're in the playoffs and you have him, I, you know, I think he's, he's back to being a, a great fantasy option and this is just a poor matchup, but you're still going to play him. Yeah. Bust is a strong word, but if you talk about 13 weeks into the season, only getting three top 10 performances from a guy, he is averaging the, the 10th most points at the running back position on that's, a per game that's basis. That's basically what happened last year with David Johnson. Right. Well, he drafted David, him number one, and he finished at ten. He finished at ten. I don't know what his actual average was, but he didn't miss games like Kamara's missed. His I'm average sure. was had to have been worse than that. Yeah, I, I would think so. Anybody else? Uh, you playing Jared Cook? I assume touchdown yeah, in yeah. four of six games. You 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 probably have that to play matchup Jared stinks Cook. for Jared Cook, but yeah, I'm going to play him. All right, 
Speaking of stinky situations, let's talk the very exciting running back situation in San Francisco. They're on the road against the Saints defense that only gives up just under 16 fantasy points a game to all running backs. That's fourth best in football. What a poopy matchup for the Dude. playoffs. These have so many good, important players. Yeah. Mostert's gotten people into the playoffs. Coleman's had big monster games. You know, Breeze and Kamara and it's like, these are, I don't want their defenses Dude. to be good. Matt Breida practiced in full. He should be active. So you'll probably have Breida, Coleman, Mostert, active. Shark Tank. Yes, for those reasons. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out on all San Francisco running backs. I fully admit and project that somebody of this team, someone of those three, will have a fantasy game of note. But I'm out. Debo would Samuel. Would you play Jamal Williams over any of I these would. three? I would as well. One player I want to move up this week, Emmanuel Sanders. Yes. Um, Thank you. That That's great. Yeah, I was going to talk about Sanders. That the, the one place you can attack the Saints defense, it's through the slot. And that's Manny Sanders has been – uh, he's been in, in the slot a lot for the San Francisco 49ers, so he's the one wide receiver. I would trust him over Debo Samuel this week. I would too, and he's play, he played 98% of snaps last week, so it wasn't like he wasn't on the field. He just didn't have the production last week. Debo had the touchdown, but this is a game, like you said, Mike, where he will be in the slot, he'll have an opportunity, and he's more weeks removed from the injury, so I actually like Emmanuel Sanders. Kittle, you always play. Jimmy G, not really a streaming option this week against – San Francisco. Yeah, this sucks. Yeah, it does. Basically, start Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, George Kittle because you knew you were going to start him and pivot wherever else you can. Maybe in a flex world, you can play a surprising Emmanuel Sanders play. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. Mm. I think it's fair. Uh, you want to talk about a, a more exciting game? The Bengals. Yeah, at, oh, yes. It actually kind of is. The Bengals at 1 and 11. This is a more exciting take on the game. Browns. Uh, the Browns are 5 and 7. Browns are 8.5 point favorites. It's a 40 point over under. Andy Dalton is back. And one of Andy Dalton's greatest attributes is the possibility that the Browns will have to play offense for a larger amount of this game. And that's the gift that Andy Dalton can give fantasy owners. Because the Lord knows he's taken from us. <laughs> so if he wants to give something to oh. us over these last few weeks, let's call it some competition on the field. Let's talk about... He, he's auditioning for his new job. Yeah, and we, f we kind of forget because we try to forget maybe. But at the beginning of the year, even though the Bengals struggled immensely, Andy Dalton was like leading the league in yardage. Yeah. You know, he went into uh, CenturyLink and for 400 and something yards against Seattle. He has the ability to do that. Now, he has Tyler Boyd. <laughs> that's that's about it. And Joe Mixon. John Ross. Uh -huh. John Ross will be active, probably not playing a yeah, an odd and full tape. set of snaps. But uh, it was funny. I read something this morning if you want to. So, A.J. Green. A.J. Green won't play. And he probably won't play this year. But he was never put on IR. Yeah. Okay. And he was never traded. And you, you ask yourself, well, why, why did they do that? Why, why are the Bengals so dumb? Well, one answer could be the fact that if you put, in, if you put him on IR, he still gets his money. The same he would have if he wasn't on IR. But then you got to give a game check to another player. Oh, my God. Oh, goodness. no. Oh, I but hope if you that's keep him true. on the active roster, no. you don't trade him, you don't have to give another game check away. Oh, I hope that's not true. Cincinnati. <laughs> but it could be very true. So in this I'm not saying it's true, but I'm not not saying it's true. Uh Joe Mixon, you're playing. Yes. Uh he's a top fifteen finisher four or five weeks. No, he's not gonna give you that super upside, but he just he plays um plays hard, win or lose, and he's been giving you some decent performances. He's got a baseline, he gets the ball out of the backfield, and Dalton moves the offense better than Finley did, so maybe he gets into the end zone. Tyler Boyd He's seventh in the NFL in total targets, and he's got Andy Dalton back. So I think you can play Tyler Boyd. Would you I agree? agree? Yep, I agree. On the Brown side, Nick Chubb, he's in your lineup. I, I think both Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt should be in your lineup. Ha -ha, the, I got you on board now. Yeah, I mean, I, this, is, this is a very plus matchup. I expect the Browns to win this game 
pretty handedly, and and I think both running backs will have a good game. The Bengals are terrible against the run. When you look at them and you stack them up on the season, you say, okay, well, they're kind of bottom 10, but they're not as bad as possible. When you actually compare who they've played to the team's that have given up more points uh, to the running back position, they are horrifically bad. So, yes, Chubb and Hunt, to me, are both going to have great games. Hunt is just too involved in the passing game and too talented, and Chubb is just obviously an auto start every week. I can't imagine you're not playing Beckham and Landry in this match in this matchup at home. <sighs> Agreed, but I would say Landry and Beckham. Yes. Out of respect. Out of respect. Yeah. And respect disrespect. the number one. Now, on the season, you're right. The wide receiver 14, Jarvis Landry, wide receiver 26, Odell Beckham. Big bust. Big, oh, big, huge. B- big yeah. bada bust. Yeah. Bada boom. <laughs> yes. No bada booms. Not enough bada booms. No. Uh, now, Baker, after the number nine and number six performances, uh, not good last week, dead last. This week against the Bengals at home, we have him at QB 16. I think that's probably, probably a little low. Now, last week, the Bengals did slow down the Sam Darnold stream significantly and make him look really dumb. But Baker at home in this matchup, other than do you have concern about the injury at all with Baker? I mean, a, a little bit. You you saw him stink uh, last week, but it was also a very, very difficult matchup. Um, yeah, I think this is a really good comp player of saying, okay, your playoffs are on the line. Are you going Drew Brees or are you going Baker Mayfield? The matchup is obviously in Baker mm. Mayfield's favor. The talent is in Drew Brees' favor. So when you're staring down an option like that, which direction do you Oof. go? Who, uh, you know, Andy, which one would I you I would play Baker Mayfield. I have Baker Mayfield three spots ahead of Drew Brees this week. I have him at 15, Brees at 18. So in those cases, I'm pivoting to the likes of Tannehill over Baker, but – yeah, I um, I think Baker has a higher ceiling at home against Cincinnati. Yeah, I think I agree. All right, anything else from this game you guys want to touch on? Mm, no. Nope. The Bengals have allowed fewer than 20 points in three straight games after allowing 21-plus over the first nine. So they are playing better on the defensive side of the ball, something that you could see in our Stream Finder tool. That's very true. Yeah, at jointhefoot.com. All right, the Colts. At six and six, take on the Buccaneers. Buccaneers are five and seven. They're home. They're favored by three points against the Colts. They're playing good football. They won a couple games here in a row, and uh, it's a forty-six and a half point over under. I don't really love anyone on the Colts side of the ball this week because the decision making at the running back position is very difficult with the platoon. You don't love Pascal? I do. Uh, I'm willing to play Pascal. I don't love Pascal, no. Uh, just because it, it, it a vote for Pascal is a vote for Brissett. And I don't think Brissett's going to have a very good week. Uh, Tampa's been better against fantasy quarterbacks. They're at home, and, and they're, they're competing right now. I like them to win the game. So from that game script perspective, maybe Jack Doyle. I like Jack Doyle more yeah. than I do Zach Pascal. But I don't disagree with you guys. You can flex Pascal because what are the options that he has anymore? Now, Paris Campbell could come back. I think yeah. he probably will be back. Paris Campbell is the interesting option who's coming back. No, I'm not Too submarine Pascal. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that could be in the range of outcomes. I'm not playing Paris Campbell by any means this week, but there is a lot of buzz going around him. His, his last game at Pittsburgh, he had the five receptions, 53 yards. They did give him three carries as well they want him to get involved and, and touch the ball I it won't surprise me to see them try to get the rookie going if he in fact comes back but it, you can't trust him for fantasy this week the biggest risk on the Brissett side you know beyond Tampa playing better is just what Brissett represents in the fantasy world I mean last week he was 25 for 40 so 40 pass attempts last week Tennessee was way ahead in that game and maybe that happens again But the previous two weeks, it was 24 and 25 passing attempts and only 15 and 16 completions. That's just not a lot to go around. If you break up 16 completions across that, you know, between Naeem Hines and Jack Doyle and Paris Campbell 
and Zach Pascal. That's my only concern. To totally. There's more risk there, but you know, if you're betting on one, it has to be Pascal. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, and that and that's really been Brissett for the most most of the season. Yes. You're talking about how that's why it hurts Hilton even when Hilton was active. Exactly how efficient he was through those first seven weeks. He was yeah, throwing a ton of touchdowns. Regression got gotcha. you. Well, regression and injury got him. I mean, when you lose Ty Hilton and you lose Eric Ebron, we don't we don't know what he would have been able to do with actual good weapons on the field. And not, Marlon Mack, not throw a touchdown on over eight percent of his passes. But in this game. Tampa Bay, they might have gotten a little bit better over the last few weeks against quarterbacks. They still are sucking against wide receivers because they gave up touchdowns to backup quarterbacks within the same game. The reality is Tampa's terrible against wide receivers. This is a must-win game for the Colts. I trust Frank Reich as a head coach and that offensive line. I, Ooh. I, the Bucks are favored by three. You're picking the Colts to win? Wow. I, They've lost four of five. Buccaneers going the right I direction. I think this is going to be a very close game. I, I'm not – I mean, I'm going to I'm have to. I'm taking the Bucs. By two touchdowns. What? No, I'm oh, I just said that. I, like, I think they do. Crazy. I think they, they cover, though. I, I'll say that. I think the Buccaneers You're taking, cover. Oh, and the points. It was like last week. I, th I thought Buccaneers would go to town last week. I, they're playing well. They are playing well. Yeah. I, I think Jameis, this one, you're playing. Yep. Of course. Do you, do you like the Colts in this game to win? I like it to to be a close game, but if uh, I would pick the Bucks, he just to win. likes Frank. Vegas Reich likes so it to be much. a close game. Who like are you Frank taking Reich. in the game? I'm taking the Bucks to okay. win. Right. I would not necessarily be all about them covering. I think it's going to be a very close game. Do they cover? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. They lose by one. <laughs> or win by one. I was trying to just get a straight answer. Ronald Jones, Peyton Barber. Hey, Ronald Jones is still the starter, says Bruce Arians. Wink. wink. He's our RB31. Peyton Barber's the RB45. That seems about right. Yeah, yeah because Ronald, Ronald Jones, has a little more upside. Ronald Jones could be fine. Like the, the matchup is bad. The Colts are fifth against fantasy running backs, so you're not excited about that. But the Buccaneers should be able to score points. And But Ronald Jones makes one mistake. To the bench he goes, even though he's the, quote, starter. I mean, I'm, I'm out. Shark Tank. Uh, Ronald Jones or Darius Geis, Mike? Geis. Nice. Ronald Jones or Adrian Peterson, Mike? Peterson. Hmm. I got to go deeper, do I? I, I, I Kenyon Drake. <laughs> Kenyon Drake. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not playing Ronald Jones. I'm not going to play a guy who could who can leave the field immediately for one mistake. I think he's going to have a good game. I, I, I think he's going to have a good game. It's really tough. I that's completely complete, I mean, that's just gut. I understand just being out because you cannot trust or predict anything that's gone on in Tampa Bay's backfield this year. But he's going to get the opportunity, and he's and had good games whenever he's yeah, been given the opportunity. With me, I mean, he should have had a great game last week. But with me being out, I readily ad admit the opportunity for a huge game for Ronald Jones does exist. You just don't, you just don't want to deal with it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I get if, it. If I'm wrong and Ronald Jones goes off on my bench, so be it. It'll just be like the rest of the <laughs> season. <laughs> exactly. Whenever Ronald Jones' decisions were to It be, will help my tiebreaker. That's, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Ronald. You helped my tiebreaker this week. Let's get into the starts. Starts of the week. All right, who wants to kick it off? I'll jump in here. We we already revealed it, but my quarterback start of the week, it's Kirk Cousins. Since week three, since week three against the Detroit Lions, only Washington failed to post top 12 quarterback numbers. And that span of games includes Chicago twice. Minnesota's at home. Kirk Cousins can, uh, can get it done for fantasy. If, even if Minnesota blows out Detroit, even if that happens, Kirk Cousins has uh, the ability to be highly efficient and still walk away with a, a great fantasy day, even if he only has to play for three quarters. I, I love Kirk this week. Uh, my my start of the week is an interesting one. It, Matt Ryan is who I've made it's as my very interesting. start of the week. This is based on having his weapons back. If Julio and, and Austin Hooper are there, I think that Matt Ryan – his struggles have been the lack of options, and it appears like he's going to have his weapons back. And the reason I'm saying Matt Ryan is my start of the week, it's not because I think he's going to be the number one guy. There are plenty of quarterbacks. Both of your starts I like better than Matt Ryan. But he is – all of these questions have happened. Do I play 
this do you play Matt Ryan or, or Drew the Brees? streamers? You know the streamers. Do I play Ryan Tannehill? Do Drew I Brees play, or Matt Ryan? No, Matt Ryan. I okay. mean that that one's easy. But I'm talking about all the Drew Brees questions of do you play this streamer, this streamer, this Fitzpatrick or Tannehill? Or if I've got Matt Ryan, I'm going to play him over all the streaming options because I don't think this is. A, a terrible matchup, and I think his struggles have been the weapons. So it's similar to what we saw with Carson Wentz when he got his guy back and he wasn't in a bad matchup. He was able to perform even though he didn't look necessarily great. That's what I have for Matt Ryan this week. Speaking of the devil, Carson Wentz is my start of the week against the Giants. What a difference a Jeffrey makes last week. 16 of those pass attempts, which, by the way, over the last three games – He's 40-plus pass attempts per game. That's just what this team is doing. 16 of them went Jeffrey's way last week, which means they were going to be caught. Like, a lot of them were going to be caught by the receiver. Has uh, He had a very good game, as Jason mentioned. Here are the fantasy finishes against the Giants, the quarterbacks that face the Giants over the last five games. Fifth, eighth, seventh, ninth, fourth. Trubisky was one of those. <laughs> I like that both. Both of our statistical breakdowns, it's, well, Trubisky was able to get it You're done. You're darn right it was. <laughs> the Trubisky line. But Wentz was the number four last <laughs> week against Miami with the three touchdowns. Should be able to get it done against the Giants. Uh, they had a very difficult loss, but the Giants are a sweet salve, much like the Cardinals were to Jared Goff. Carson Wentz is uh, my guy this week. Turning to running back, Mike... It's Devonta Freeman, and I know that this one feels bad because Devonta Freeman it is if if Camara is a bust or in that conversation, Devonta Freeman is locked and loaded. No. You no, no, he's not a bust. What De Devonta Freeman's not a bust because you know if you listen to me, you would never have drafted him anyways. No, you would have taken worst. somebody else over him. Sure, it, regardless. Uh, since the bye week, the Panthers have been absolutely getting crushed by the running back position. And like, look at last week. That was Darius Geist. That was Adrian Peterson. Both of those guys annihilated the Panthers' run defense. And, uh, and Devonta Freeman came back off of his injury. Immediately 22 opportunities for Devonta Freeman. He is the main guy. The matchup is there. I like Devonta Freeman to get it done as a lower-end running back, too, this week. I hate this matchup for Devonta Freeman. Because you because, love it. Because it's so good. You love it. It's so good. Carolina is so bad. The 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 carries and the opportunities are going to be there. And, you know, it's like, yeah, you you should probably play Devonta Freeman. Yes. Like, I, I totally get it. But I don't want to like it. And when he has a bad game, I, I will. <laughs> Act like you called it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not <laughs> – oh, man, I just I, – I hate that he's got such a good matchup. Carolina is so bad. I've got a start of the week that is not in a great matchup. He's one of those borderline players of, do I start this guy or do I worry about the matchup? I'm talking about Devin Singletary, who's really come on lately, against Baltimore, whose defense has come on lately. I don't know what this line is off the top of my head, but I think Buffalo competes in this game. The way that I see – Five and a half. I mean, I, I think Buffalo is – a, a, a really good team. Their offense is getting They're nine done. and three. They're not turning the ball over. Their defense is great. And, of course, Baltimore is going to be able to score with Lamar Jackson. There's just no way to stop him right now. He's on fire. But Singletary has been very good. If you look at his usage, since he has, you know, he was injured, got off to this, uh, a good start, got injured, came back, and once he was given, you know, the, the, the bulk of the carries, which was in week nine, he is averaging 15 and a half carries and three and a half targets a game. I mean, he's almost getting 20 touches, and then he's super efficient with it. Andy, earlier you said, you know, De Devin Singletary's looked really good, but he hasn't been great for fantasy. That's actually not true in the sense that in the last five weeks, he's the running back nine in fantasy. Now, this matchup is difficult, but I'm going to go with the talent and the touches of Singletary to be able to do enough against Baltimore where I, I'm giving my vote of confidence to say if he's on my roster, I'm I'm sticking with Singletary. I think the talent wins out. Six of nine games that Devin Singletary has played, he's been a top 24 guy. Yeah, I you know what it came down to is the feeling in the Cleveland-Miami matchups because those were, those were the smash play weeks right. for Devin Singletary where he ended up 27 and 33, 
But you're right. He's the RB5 over the last six weeks, Jay. You didn't open that sample up enough. Yeah. Um, I'm going with Philip Lindsay. Oh, oh no. I, I love oh, it. No. It's going to happen finally. Houston. Now, th- there's a few factors here. Number one is the opponent. He's facing Houston, who's getting gashed. The last three weeks, they've given up the most points, the eighth most, and the third most to the fantasy running back. That's step one. Uh, step two is opportunity. Philip Lindsay, 15.3 attempts a game, two receptions a game. What's he going to do with it? Step three, Royce Freeman, 24 scrimmage yards last week, nursing a rib injury this week. Philip Lindsay will get 15 plus carries and two receptions. What he does with it, well, I'm hoping that it's a lot because it's Houston as the opponent. So, Philip Lindsay, I want to give him, we've expected a lot from him towards the end of the season. We've gotten a lot by way of opportunity. We have not gotten a lot by way of production. But I like this this week against Houston to be, you know, uh, a matchup that Philip Lindsay can exploit. So I'm going to take him. Are you going to lock it in? Lock it in. His new quarterback? Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, yeah. So you need to walk us a little bit closer to the joke. I was wondering, like, how does Tyler Lockett? Yeah, me too. Get no, no. connected no, here. No, no. Lock it. There you go. Yeah, that, that's I don't what, know. That's it's, what you needed. Put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yeah, yeah no, it's uh, it was really <laughs> good. Mike, give us a wide receiver. It's Robbie Anderson. Over the last five weeks, the Dolphins have allowed the fifth most points per game to fantasy wide receivers. The Jets are at home. Robbie is finally gaining momentum with a touchdown or at least 80 yards in his last three games. He is blossoming into the wide receiver that I hoped he would be all year, but much like Robbie Anderson does, he just saves it all for the very end of the year, and we're in Robbie Anderson season. See, it's it's so much more valuable to have statistical momentum as opposed to pre-draft momentum. Because mm-hmm. Robbie had all of that, yep. and it didn't matter. But now he's actually – the target share and all those things, I absolutely love it. Yeah, I'm going to go with Stephon Diggs, who had a terrible game last week. But the reality is the Detroit Lions are hyper bad at stopping anybody. The target share, the market share for, for Stephon Diggs has been great. He got nine targets last week, turned into 25 yards. I don't think that's going to happen against the Lions. You've got him – you know. Adam Thielen is a, is a question mark here. We don't know if he's going to play. We said earlier, if he does play, we would not play him. Um, but if he does play, that will, I think, open things up for Stephon Diggs a little bit more. He's a guy that I'm not going to bench based on last week's bad play because in the end, right, you, you've got Kirk Cousins as your start of the week. He, he, you know, it should have a really good game in this matchup. In the end, Stephon Diggs is just a really good wide receiver. He's been frustrating for fantasy because he's up and down. He's not very consistent, but you want those giant ups because he's he's one of the rare guys out there that has the talent and ability to finish a week as the wide receiver one in this matchup with Vegas having them one of the highest implied team totals. I'm going to go with Diggs. All right, I'm going Alshon Jeffrey. I'm going the stack with you Wentz. Are. Alshon against the Giants, Monday Night Football. Last week, he returned from injury, and uh, you know he's one of the players that I had no problem starting off of injury because Carson Wentz needs a friend. 16 targets, 9 catches, 137 yards, 1 touchdown. He's averaging 9 targets a game, over 5 receptions, and the Giants, oh, the Giants, they just... We brought up Trubisky, right? Trubisky went ham against them. Well, so did the wide receivers, 35.2 fantasy points two weeks ago. Last week, Green Bay, the number four overall total at wide receiver. Alshon Jeffrey is a lock this week. Oh. Guaranteed. Are you he gonna doesn't even have lock Drew Locke. <laughs> he doesn't even have Drew Locke, but he is so guaranteed for production this week. You won't wince? No, you will not wince at his fantasy numbers at the end of the night. We did it. Yeah. Well done. All right, my tightest start of the week. I am the Walrus, Darren Waller. Hold on. Let me go ahead and... Oh! Goo, 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 goo. Look, Tennessee is a low-key, sneaky matchup for tight ends. They're, average, they're giving up the 11th most points to fantasy tight ends over the past five weeks. They have allowed a top 12 tight end performance in eight of 12 games. Waller's targets are back on the rise with Hunter Renfro out, and as are his fantasy finishes, 12, 
11, 5 the past three weeks. If that, if that trend continues. Look, I, I hope you're, top four. you're able to motivate him. Last week, uh, you know, he listened to me. He did. He was the number one tight end. I hope you. I hope he listens to you. You mean the number five tight end? Oh, was he number five yeah. last week? Yes. Eh, all right. So he, clearly he'll. Oh, be you number- know what it was? What I was thinking of is in the stream finder, the number they gave up. It was the uh, Derek Carrier had a touchdown at the end of that yeah. game. So they were number one as a team. Yeah. So I, I'm playing the Waller with confidence. Uh, for me, I've talked about him a lot. Obviously, I'm a little bit more on the Colts than you guys are. But with the missing weapons, Jack Doyle should be excellent. He was actually on a stretch of three back-to-back-to-back tight end one performances before those weapons went down. Then he goosed, and he burned people, hit a lot of waivers, which is why you're able to pick him up. But the Buccaneers are so bad at guarding the tight end position. If you look at them you know, compared to other teams at the position, only the Arizona Cardinals are worse. The only good games recently for the – for the Bucks, no, I'm t- uh, yeah, I'm talking about giving recently. Up. No, not not recently. Given up uh, compared to the teams that they've been playing. Um, okay, I got you. So you know, look, they didn't have Jacksonville didn't do much with their tight end against them last week, but Jacksonville's tight end is exactly Atlanta <laughs> didn't do much <laughs> against them recently, but that was without Austin Hooper. If you have any tight end of note, they they do work against the Bucks. This is a must-win game for the Colts. Doyle is involved and talented enough while you have no Ebron, while you have no T.Y. Hilton. Uh, I I mean, I think it's a blessing this time of year for teams that snuck into the playoffs with no tight end to be able to play someone like Jack Doyle and have at least volume where you think he's going to get five or six receptions and then hopefully get a, get a touchdown. All right, I'm going Mike Gesicki against the New York Jets who won't have Jamal Adams. Mike Gesicki's the number six tight end over the last five weeks. Listen to these target totals. Six, 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 seven, seven. Oh. He has guaranteed Ryan Fitzpatrick targets, who has been leading the way yardage-wise in that run. Uh, I like Mike Gesicki a ton this week. He is involved. It's the Devontae Parker, Mike Gesicki show with Ryan Fitzpatrick, the bearded one, leading the way. Uh, and a little low-key, sneaky, pay attention to it just in case. I really wanted to go with Tyler Higby here again. We just don't know if Gerald Everett's actually going to be out. I tend to think he'll be active, which means you're going to split that production against Seattle's defense. But I think Tyler Higby, Higby could do it again this week. He could. If he's alone as the tight end against Seattle. I, uh, I just want to echo the love for the Gasicki play. I, I think he is an, an excellent option. He's one of the most talented you know, humans at the position. He's just an, a physical freak. And if you look at what happened when the Dolphins lost Preston Williams, you talk about recently the targets are up. Well, that's that's just because Preston, you know, right. you look at the game splits with and without Preston Williams, he was down at four targets a game without him. Now he's at six and a half targets per game without Preston Williams. I'm a big fan of Gasicki moving forward. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. It's fantasy playoff time for everyone's favorite hobby. You'll do well this week with the Packers' Mason Crosby. Woof. That was real bad. Hobby and Crosby. Mm. Uh, Let me just say this. Uh, If I were to give it an honest rating, 10 out of 10. Not surprised. Uh, 10 out of 10. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't go with everyone's favorite, Harazby. <laughs> yes. It's, well, I thought about it. <laughs> there were a couple other rhymes I could have gone with that were bad. That, uh, that gorilla, yeah. Harazby. Mm. Want to thank our studio sponsor, <laughs> Pristine Auction, a Jarvis Landry signed jersey. $73.71 yesterday. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. Back with more matchups tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Got a little longer show today. A little bonus. Bonus. Mini Ladon. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.